the Nigerian army comes under attack, not from terrorists or bandits, but from The Economist. The publication describing the army as being mighty on paper, but being filled with ghosts uh, who only exist on the payroll. But both, of course, the army and the presidency have hit back. We'll be having that conversation this morning. Also coming up is a discussion about the state of Nigeria, the threat of terrorism and kidnappings in the north. I pop in the south is governance in Abuja, the Anambra state governorship election and the 2023 general election. And in our top trend in today, Liverpool humiliates Manchester United 5-0 at home. Thanks to a hat-trick for Mohamed Salah, of course, a viral post describes the ghost uh, being roasted for Salah. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Welcome to a brand new Monday morning. I am Osao Gye Ogbon. And I am Messi Bokbo. It's good to have you join us this morning. Uh, so one of the things with television is, you know, the... You know, there's production, there's anchors, there's, you know, you know, uh, you know, a background on the conversations that you're meant to have. But one of the challenges is not every conversation that, you know, you necessarily want to have. Like the fact that, you know, I have to read a script this morning <laughs> saying Manchester United got humiliated and a goat was used for Salah. I'm not necessarily excited about uh, having these conversations Why, why, why is that? Um, is there any particular reason? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to fight... <laughs> <laughs> Let the cameras go first. <laughs> Good morning, anyway. Let's get into our top trending stories this morning before we get to the last one uh, that I hope that we don't have time for. The IPOB, of course, in the Southeast has declared a um, six-day sit-at-home. It starts from the 5th to the 10th of November. And, of course, uh, they have stated this, you know, and they said if the government doesn't release their leader, Namdi Kanu, by the 5th, then, of course, there would be a seat at home across the southeast um, for those six days. And remember also that um, um, the Anambra State Governorship elections are meant to be coming up on the 6th of November. And so that's why, of course, it's, it's generating huge conversations across the southeast and, of course, across the whole country. Um, numerous times I've spoken about this, and I said, you know, I'm sure that they know that the seat at home has no effect on... Um, you know, the president or, or Nigeria release in Namdi Khan has zero effect whatsoever. Um, so I'm not sure why they still do it. You know, and I've always continuously said that I feel like these things are done because they enjoy the, the you know, the euphoria of the power that, they, you know, they seem to have when they say everyone should sit at home and people actually do. And so it's sweet for them. And, you know, every, you know, four market days, every time that the weather was too hot, you know, they say, in fact, let's, let's have a seat at home. Someone bur burns rice or the student come out too good, sit at home in the southeast. Um, whatever reason that they can, they can imagine there is a sit at home. Um, and so, yes, there's going to be another one, according to them. Um, and I'm not sure how the Southeasterners will take it this time, because I'm not sure if, you know, if, if this, I've always said that there would be a breaking point. There will be a point where people would say, um, enough is enough, and we're done with this, sit at home. We're no longer going to be complying with this. Um, I expected it to happen some time ago, but it still hasn't happened. Um, I'm thinking that maybe this would be it, because I know that the whole Southeast will not stay indoors for six days, for any reason, while business needs to go on, while money needs to be made, while mouths need to be fed. Well, if you look at it over time, you would also see that there's some level of compliance. And the level of compliance would be, you know, it can be um, burden on the fact that people are just scared, you know, because over time, those who have not really complied have actually had their goods uh, you know, properties destroyed and some persons have lost their lives in the course of all of this. So the level of compliance, usually it's as a result of, you know, fear for their lives and all of that. Now, I'm quite worried because I really don't know whatever happens in Anambra come the 6th would be a reflection of what will happen in 2023. And so uh, it's, it's really, really worrisome. At the end of the day, yes, it's okay to say you're agitating. Uh, it's okay to feel disgruntled. It's okay to say you have been marginalized. But, you know, the modes of approach how are you going about um, trying to get... It's like in a family, you don't feel really good about how mom or dad is treating you. How do you go about trying to communicate to yourself? Yeah. I mean, tell your thoughts across, you know. So, so that's the problem because 
Uh, we've also seen a situation where students were supposed to write the examinations. They couldn't really write it. And also, we, we also have reports that the governor of Anambra State, uh, Obiano, has also has made plans that students should be attending lectures on Saturday. Which so I, it, uh, I, I found really shameful. Very, um, very. And the question now would be, should state, state actors, you know, bow? I mean, should, you know, state government bow to non-state actors? Because it's already sending a signal. If you're already saying, oh, uh, because you can't go to school on a Monday, why don't you have uh, lectures on a Saturday, so yeah. that's already a body language saying that maybe the governor is uh, the government is already tilting towards so, so, uh, all that's so, going on. So I don't on. think the body language. Well, the body language has been on for a long time. You know, seeing that every Monday the South is shut down and this has been going on for months now, um, and they've not been able to do anything about it or fix it. And, and so it's not it's not just now. I'm just finding it really shameful that the whole governor, you know, will get to a place where he can't even control the people in the state. He can't even tell the people in the state that they. Are safe if they come out on Mondays. He can't even assure the people of his state that he is in control. You are governor of your state and you're, you're obviously now saying that, okay, I'm no longer in control. Uh, let's leave Monday for the IPOB. You guys should come out to school on Saturdays. It's very, very, very shameful. And this is the thing that the IPOB has been pointing out. The failure, complete failure of leadership in the Southeast with the political leadership, traditional le leadership, uh, social cultural leadership, whatever it is, complete failure of, of, of leadership across the whole five uh, Southeastern states to the extent that they've now filled in that void and they can decide that, okay, well, you know, any other day that we feel like everyone should stay at home, do stay at home. And yes, like you said, it will um, tell, paint a big picture about what the number of elections would be and, of course, 2023. Um, and also, um, I, I'm not sure who exactly is talking to Emma Powerful or any of these IPOB spokespersons. So, so, so my, that's where my concern is because I have been doing a lot of thinking. Uh, why are we not having conversations? Are this person's not approachable? Do they not have a face? Why don't we come to the table? Why don't we come to a point where we sit on the other side of the table and talk about all of these things? What's really going on? Because at the end of the day, you have you know a people to represent, and you want to tell me that I mean, look at all of the shutdowns. Every other time, it would affect you know the economic activity of the state I don't think, I, it's I don't not it's not a good much. thing i don't think they care that i don't get the ipb cares that much about those, those because aspects. with all of the sit down the question with all of the sit at home others no one is saying you should not protest no one is saying you should not agitate but the question is how much result have you gotten what do you intend to achieve Fear. Yeah. and and this because is this is a a very very clear picture of the thing that you you being the, you know you becoming the thing that you've criticized for a long time, um, criticizing tyranny for somehow you know somehow somewhere, and then eventually you yourself becoming a tyrant because you are now of course forcing your people and the people that you you claimed you know to want to save and want to get them out of the Nigeria that has not treated them fairly. You are now punishing those same people and becoming a tyrant to those same people. And that's, that's exactly what is playing out, you know, by ruining their businesses every Monday and also by, of course, punishing those who you... They, they say that's the ultimate price they have to pay. And uh, it's saying, crazy. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see how this plays out. I, I'm looking forward to seeing this, you know, what the next, um, what those six days look like from the 5th to the 10th um, or 11th of uh, November. Um, and I, I hope, you know, that this might be that breaking point that I've been waiting for, uh, for the Southeasterners. Moving away from the south, let's, let's come to Lagos. I think we have some clips that we'll play or we'll share with you, and then we get into this discussion. This happened in Ogudu, I believe, here in Lagos. Um, if we have those clips, let's um, have them on, on uh, screen. You want to show him? You want to, you want to blow his head? You want to blow his head? Show them! Show all of them! Show all of them! All of them!
Very stereo, uh, stereotypical Nigerian police response when, you know, situation seems to be overwhelming them. You know, they start saying, you came here, you asked for our leader, oh, God, calm down now, please now, <laughs> relax first. You know. It's embarrassing. Very, very. Um, we, we, we've had conversations about the NSAS protest and what it hoped to achieve. Uh, for some people, it was the end of the special anti-robbery squad. For others, and the bigger picture really was a complete reform of the Nigerian policing system and uh, the Nigerian police itself. Um, but one year later, if we're still seeing these things, and what you're seeing there really is um, comedian uh, Mr. Macaroni uh, confronting and challenging some policemen who, uh, if you see the, the, the boy on the T-shirt, you know, claimed that he had just transferred 30,000 naira to this same policeman um, who stopped him, you know, in, you know, on, on, in traffic here in Lagos. Um, and that's exactly what the Nigerian youth were complaining about, um, you know, during the NSAS protest. One year later, absolutely nothing has changed. You still see policemen, and I've said this many, many times here, that you still see policemen that they don't look for criminals on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. They wait till Thursday night or Friday night when they know that there's a lot of people who are going to be out having fun. That's when they remember that criminals will be out. Criminals don't move on Mondays. But this is the same attitude from this same very, very disgusting set of, of policemen who do these same things and look out for people to prey on and hope that they can make some money off them. So the truth is we're still going in circles. I mean, it feels like we're still saying the same thing over and over again. Obvious, uh, it's very uh, obvious that nothing has really changed, yes, and that's why we still find that extortion, uh, what's still going on, okay? But the question is, uh, for how long will this continue? I, I, I must commend, you know, Mr. Macaroni for his bravery. He's a brave man. And would always say that evil will continue to thrive when, or, you know, thrive when evil yeah. good men keep Stay quiet silent, or yes. are silent. So uh, this is what we need, because it's really tiring. I mean, yeah. every day we keep saying the same thing over and over, different angles. We keep going through the same circle, you know, so it becomes a vicious circle. But what do we do? Is so let's assume that at every point, because that's good. It doesn't matter whether, whether or not there was any result at the end of the day, whether or not anything happened. But you see that particular action, that attitude by Mr. Macaroni, that's what we need. So and, and imagine that every Nigerian... Every Single time, yes. You know, we're out there and you see something wrong that's not good. We're able to confront it. That's how we're going to get the change. It's, with it's, yeah, and I, I totally agree. Um, what he has done is what I have continuously wished that Nigerians would do. When you see something going wrong, Speak don't up. just drive past, you know, mm -hmm. and act like it's not your business. You should get involved. You mm -hmm. should be able to say, you know, we do not want to see this type of things going on in our society anymore. And so, yes, he would, he did it, you know, and, and I'm hoping, you know, that this being on camera and these videos being released should get Nigerians to get involved generally and, and always step out when they see these type of situations, when they see, you know, people being harassed by these same, by these um, um, corrupt police officers uh, for absolutely no reason, profiling young Nigerians for absolutely no reason. Including, and, and the, looking you know, for they, ways. they have the different categories. Yeah, you have the yeah. last smile. And all of them. All of them. You all know, and the EFCCL, who was also, and also now the you know neighborhood you know guys who I complained about last week, who have decided to join in, in this same mess. Um, everyone should get involved, you know, with these things, you know, and ensure that these things stop. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm saying this really, and I'm reflecting back on last year when we, when the protest was going on, and I heard Lagos and say, "Oh, you know, you are stressing us. Oh, you are blocking our toll gate. We are trying to get to work." That is a very very disgusting attitude because these things that these people came out for. It's not just for them. It is because they needed to see a better policing system in the whole country. And if in the comfort of your little small bends and your little, you know, 300,000 naira salary at the end of the month, you feel like you're, it doesn't concern you, you're not interested, you want to quickly go to work with your suit and your fine shirt, and you don't want to be stressed. As long as it doesn't, you know, consent. Exactly. And, and it's a very, very terrible attitude by, that some Nigerians have. As long as it's not affecting you directly, you throw your face the other way, you don't, get, you don't uh, um, bother to get yourself involved with it. So... You know, what he did is what I expect that every Nigerian should be able to do when they see something going wrong in every single, you know, ramification. Um, I mean, we, we, of course, would hope that we can get some, you know, information as to how that ended. If, you know, the young man was refunded, his 30,000 naira, um, and how, you know, that case ended. Uh, but look at this, you know, policeman with a phone, clown. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what he was v filming. What, 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 <laughs> is he going to post it on his own social media page? I, I really don't know because... Or, um, Facebook page? You know, when we saw that video, when I saw that video particularly, I was also concerned, like, why is he recording? It, people are so daft. <laughs> <laughs> Whew.
All right. So I was hoping that we could, you know, waste enough time and not get to talk about the last well, uh, trading story. But yesterday was uh, very, very reflective of some time ago when, um, you know, Bayern Munich humiliated Barcelona eight goals to two that led to a complete refurbishment of the Barcelona Football Club. Well, you know, it, it seems like they're back to where they were before currently, though. But um, Liverpool yesterday completely embarrassed Manchester United at home at Old Trafford, five goals to nil. Cristiano Ronaldo finally was able to score one goal sometime during the game, which was eventually cancelled. Uh, Manchester United have four yellow cards for, you know, some of the, you know, I think Bruno Fernandes, um, Paul Pogba had a red card, Cristiano Ronaldo had a yellow card, um, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, I believe, also had a yellow card. It was just a complete embarrassment of what Manchester United should be um, um, in any way that you can describe the club. And Liverpool definitely came and served that breakfast hot and steamy with extra sausages. I, um, I'm not sure, you know, and yesterday, I'm a Manchester United fan, but yesterday, no, I'm at, I'm at a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, to be honest, I'm at a point, point where I'm completely numb. If the game ended 11 nil yesterday, if it ended 25 nil yesterday, I wouldn't have felt anything whatsoever. So I'm, I'm beginning to think that this is a point where, you know, my United fans should begin to act like ass now. You don't need to. No, be, no, no, no. I don't just, think, I don't uh, think we'll you ever just get watch, there. You know, I think you just need to watch the game. But really what happened, I know that some persons had complained about, you know, uh, the poor performance. Although, yes, it probably would have turned out in some, some uh, good way. He got improved during the At Atalanta game. Uh, some people complained about, you know, the start of the lineup. And one would think that it was the same reputation. Same thing happened again with the Liverpool game. Yeah. I mean, Liverpool and Man United. So, uh, usually, if you have an experience, I mean, it's always good to reflect, go back to the drawing board. What did you do wrongly? Uh, what, what happened uh, that was not correct and see how to correct it. But we still saw the same mistake mistake you know uh, that was not so basically you would see that you know poor structure running and all of that I mean as much as I'm a Liverpool fan <laughs> it was really really amazing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, needs very, to go very very sad he needs to go first of all <laughs> um, and he needs to be arrested mm. right after getting his sack letter he needs to be taken to a panty or what's that place called <laughs> and kept there for at least 12 days <laughs> well <laughs> that place is called that's how I feel I Aside know. the fact that I'm completely numb now, mm -hmm. and the reason I'm numb is, is mostly because I've been saying this for a long time, and my friends know that I've been saying this. The Manchester United is not playing, they're not playing like champions. Cristiano Ronaldo's presence or not, they're still not playing like champions. But what and you can think see that, you know, with the game. presence of, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, well, there should be some kind it's of not, difference. It's not enough. And, and this, this I, is, I said at some point why. that he was becoming very aggressive. He was he always gets like that when he You know, he ends up way. looking like a bully but, in the field. But this is why. When he played at Juventus, you know, people would argue that, um, you know, he basically was championing every single victory or most of the victories that they had. They won, you know, trophies, you know, because of his presence, you know, and the things that he was able to do. Um, but you would also admit that it also is centered around the attitude of the players in Juventus at that time. Same thing with Real Madrid. Same thing. And of course, big, a bigger coach, you know, the, the players had a different attitude. They, they were warriors. They wanted to win. And Cristiano Ronaldo would always, you know, be the one championing that spirit in the team. But look at the team in Manchester United. They are not even... Mar Maguire, Fred, McTominay, all of them, they're not even playing that like they care if they win or not. And that same attitude is what they've carried. Every single game that we've won this season has been, you know, Sherlock. It has been somehow, somewhere, you know, we are two goals down or one goal down, somehow, somewhere, comeback but, games. But, and but you see, at the end of the day, it's a combination of what the coach does he and, you know, you know, the players. Because, uh, typical, you would see the Chelsea team right now, uh, the performance that they're putting up, and then you ask yourself, the same players, what actually changed? At the end it, of the day, the, you the talk about the coach. coach. Solskjaer had not won any, any cup. <laughs> you know, since he left Manchester United as a coach, he hasn't won anything. I'm not even it's sure okay. why they considered him. In the first I'm place. sure you guys will have a great outing some other time. Oh, I'm know. sure we wouldn't. <laughs> you know, and I hope. Yeah, you know, and this is, you know, it might, it might be, you know, a sad thing to say, but I, I would, I, I looked through the comments at Manchester United Instagram page, and 95% of the people said that were saying the same thing. Oh, lay out. He, ne he needs to go. He doesn't in any way give the players what they need or give the team what it needs to be a a trophy win inside. They are simply just playing football and hoping that somehow, some way, they get to scramble in a goal. Look at their gameplay. It's boring. It's it's. There's nothing there. And, that and then to think you that you're team. playing with a team like you know Liverpool, you should do better. We I'm saying be able to beat Canopilas. 
um, comfortably <laughs> that's um, the enough. way they're playing. That's I'm, I'm being honest with you. That's 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 the way the Manchester United is currently playing. We mm -hmm. will not beat Enugu Rangers comfortably. We will maybe maybe able to get a two one victory over Enugu Rangers or Canopilas, the way that we are playing. And maybe it will be Ronaldo that will score the winning goal in the 90th minute and then we'll celebrate for you know a couple of days. But it's it's very, very sad. Um, what it I hope Right now, um, Conte is free, Zidane is free. If they don't take advantage of this now and they continue to use Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we will end up finishing 13th or 14th this season. Mm -hmm. And Manchester United may not even get into Europe next season. And then Pogba will leave and then Ronaldo will leave. And Ronaldo would not leave any time soon. Anyway, we need to go. <laughs> Thanks a lot for starting up our Monday with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're getting into Off the Press. The major stories making the headlines across Nigeria this morning. We'll be sharing with you with our guest, Femi Lawson.